Hare Krishna. Question. Uh, when we say that a person in transcendence uh, does not need much sleep, just three to four hours is enough, then where is the law of the body the, of needing rest? How do we reconcile the two? Answer. Now, it is not necessary that a person in transcendence will sleep only three, four hours. Or it is, to put it in another way, we cannot just uh, simplistically equate the two. That a person who sleeps very less is trans spiritually advanced or a person who is spiritually advanced will necessarily sleep less. No, there are people who have the disease of insomnia and because of which they sleep very less. So those who are insomniac, those who are sleepless, they are not automatically spiritually advanced, the first thing. And yes, there may, there may be great souls who are spiritually advanced who may sleep less, but sleeping less is not the primary criteria of spiritual advancement. The primary criteria is not, one of the criteria is avyartha kalatvam, not wasting any time more than what is necessary on any activity, which is on any activity and especially activities which are not, uh, which are connected with the body. So, an advanced devotee doesn't spander to the body by excessive sleep. They sleep as much as is necessary and beyond that they engage in the service of Krishna as much as is possible. So, now depending on the body of certain devotees, they may need uh, 6 hours less. Some devotees may be able to get along with 3-4 hours rest. So, we shouldn't uh, uh, simplistically equate spiritual advancement with with uh, extremely less sleep. Yes, at a, by, at a physical level, if we don't sleep enough, usually there are consequences. Uh, at the same time, even among people in general, there can be wide variability in how much sleep people need. Some people can manage with 5-6 hours sleep. Some people may need 8 hours sleep. And uh, this varies from person to person. So we shouldn't uh, simply think that Less sleep means spiritual advancement. Yes, the different bodies have different natures. And based on the bodily nature, one may need a certain amount of sleep. So whatever is needed, we need to, uh, we need to take that much rest. And we, we need to take that much rest and we should let others take that much rest, whatever is required. So now, uh, some devotees, because of a very strong sense of purposefulness and a very strong sense of uh, urgency in doing some things, may may sleep less for some time and then that may itself become a extend, extension of their body's capacity and they may be able to sleep less uh, on a regular basis. So we can see that as a capacity, we can see that, we could see that as just their physical stamina, physical capacity, they don't need so much sleep. As I said, it's not that the body, all just as different people can eat different quantities of food. Some people eat less, some people eat more. And <coughs> Bhima would eat a lot and still he was a great devotee. And other Raghunath Swami would eat very little and he is also a great devotee. So we don't have to necessarily uh, uh, equate, just as we don't necessarily equate how much somebody eats with how advanced they are. No, different people have different bodily needs. So some people may get may get along with very simple and very little food. Others may eat a lot and that's all perfectly fine. So uh, when it is required, you know, Bhakti Sanskrit Thakur would usually eat very simple food. Shila Prabhupada would, you know, he would encourage disciples to cook opulently and he would partake of what they would cook. In this way, he would train his disciples in cooking, in cooking well for Krishna's service. And he would take nice food. But both were exalted devotees and both were serving Krishna in their own ways. So just as we can have variability in how what one eats. So, but when Srila Prabhupada needed, when he had very little, practically no money, and when he was in Delhi, living at different people's houses at different times, and he was living at Chipiwara temple, say, when he was in uh, practical, uh, practically in poverty, at that time, many days, Prabhupada would forsake breakfast so that he could use that money for purchasing paper by which he could print back to Godhead and distribute back to Godhead. So his spiritual purpose was most important for him. And for the sake of that spiritual purpose, if it was required that he, uh, he forego his breakfast, he was ready to do that. But that was not what he did throughout his life. Later when he could take attend to the body and do his service, 
uh, he and he did that so he would take fields properly and it is not that Prabhupada neglected his body now Prabhupada would go on morning walks Prabhupada would take massage for his body and he he knew that his body was being used in Krishna's service and he took care of his body so yes we could say we could say that it uh, it is his transcendental of uh, transcendental intense aspiration to satisfy his spiritual master's instruction to share Krishna consciousness in the Western world that enabled Srila Prabhupada to push his body's dim bodies uh, needs to as less as possible and sleepless and still serve Krishna. But the point was we shouldn't think of Srila Prabhupada sleeping less as torturing the body or as neglecting the body. Now he was able to he did that for 11 12 years and he was and he he was able to do that and he did that but he but he also knew that his body needed some some uh, things and that's why he would take massage he would go on morning walk so he would take proper food so the point is we cannot simplistically uh, equate certain things with spiritual advancement and we cannot say as you as you rightly said we cannot say that the law of material, the material laws in terms of the body's basic needs and body survival necessities, they cannot be wished away. So we all need, we all, as we become more and more serious and advanced devotees, we want to serve Krishna more and more. And we serve Krishna when we are awake by doing, by using, by filling every moment with as much service as possible. And when we take rest, we see that as an opportunity to replenish the bodily vehicle which is enabling us to serve Krishna. So when with that mood we take rest, we don't simply just uh, give in to the body, rather we give the body what it needs so that we can serve Krishna. And the body is a facility for serving Krishna. So taking care of the body is also service to Krishna. And Prabhupada says that if you don't take care of your health, and then later on, even if you are enthusiastic, you will not be able to serve Krishna because the body will not be healthy. So, yes, we need to respect the body's needs and we need to take care of the body. At the same time, uh, we shouldn't uh, pander to the body. And according to, as by our own experience, as we learn how much is the, our, our body's needs, how much is our body's capacity, accordingly, we can try to maximize our service to Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.